five minutes. Okay, I'm Daniel Eppenite. This is the breaking news, and we're finally here with Mark Alisco. And uh, he didn't know I was going to do this, but uh, I've got some words for you, man. So uh, this is Mark Alisco is the only candidate I actually have a history with. So he was my principal for three years. And, and when I was a kid, when I was a kid, we had a few interactions. And, yeah. and in that time... I beat you? Yeah, well, well sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. I, well, if, if you did, I deserved that. But uh, in that time, there's there's one thing I can say about you. It's you have such a, a, a commanding presence. You know, I remember, and I told you this a long time ago about the stories. He used to come into every classroom every once in a while, and he would just tell these amazing stories. History stories. History stories. I love yeah. that stuff. The, the story of Rasputin. Do you remember of telling course. that? Yeah. You might not. Like, it, it's so powerful, too, because it's, it's those little things you do in someone's life that, like, stick with them. Yeah. And I'll never forget those stories. The Russian monk. The Russian monk. Yeah. yeah. The Bolshevik Revolution. And uh, so the, the one thing... The one thing is I remember about you is that the, the kids were quiet because they were so interested. Wow. And it was it was just this this phenomenal thing that happened that you only remember a few times in school history where when you walked in and told those stories, they would just stop talking. And uh, after that I miss those days. Those are great days. Those yeah. Great days. I yeah. Miss and, those days. and after that, uh, you, you taught at School too. I had you. I taught you in college. I yeah, about, I had you uh, in college, and that made you one of my personal top five public speakers. So, well, thank I, you. Yeah, That's yeah. Flattered. Thank you very and, much. And uh, so I can say I, I can't speak for anything outside of school and education. And that's what we're going to learn about you today. Yes. And uh, but I know one thing. You, you've been a very positive role model for me. Every interaction. So for that. Thank you, Dan. Thank that's you. very nice of you to say that. And thank you. That. Well, that's the whole point of education. That, that's what you try to do. And if I accomplish it with you, that, that makes me feel very satisfied. So thank you for that. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, I, that was a surprise. I, he didn't know I was going to do that. But I, I really do. I really appreciate that. But before we start, I do have one message i got to shout out. Wednesday at 7 o'clock at Fox Chapel, Newcastle High School is playing um, Elizabeth Ford in the playoff game. I, I coached for a long time. So I told those guys I'd give them a shout out. You All of those boys, Nicky Morrell and Braden Cartwright and, and Bean Senchak, Jake Grippo, go get them Wednesday. I'm going to be there at 4 o'clock to watch you guys play. Can't wait to watch it. That's awesome. That's good awesome. stuff. Good thank stuff. You for, thank you for doing that. I'm sure, you know, a lot of people, they play. It's it's hard. You know, they want to get that out there. So, as you know, we ask five questions. We're not going to do that. Um, we're not going to do that. Mark Alisco, we had a poll and you can see it printed here. Um, you can see it printed here. We're just going to run down the most popular ones. Uh, I think we've got time for all but one, which was the least voted on one. And there's some comical ones in here that we're going to talk about. But uh, let's just get right into yeah, it. Yeah, you know, we could just flow right through them. Some of them you can combine them. But yeah. nevertheless, you know, and, and I want to say this, Dan. You know, I certainly wasn't prepped for this, nor uh, simply because I've been preparing for this job for five years. So I've been studying the issues all that time and studying solutions. This is not a win for me. Uh, this isn't something I decided to do seven, eight months ago. This is something that I've been working on for five years. And um, and I've prepared both financially for it, and, and I've, I've prepared uh, studying the issues, looking for solutions. So uh, whatever those questions are, and I've glanced at them, and they're fine. I, I mean, we, we can go through them, so go. Okay. All right. So, what's your plan to get the group of drug dealers out of NC? And this is the this is the top voted one. Yeah, and and, and that's and listen that that's a major that's a major major issue. And there's a, a, a number of reasons for it. First of all, I want to say that a, a couple of weeks ago at the uh, at the um, uh, confluence we had that that meet and greet, and I said I was going I was going to declare war. On those, on the enterprise systems that are that have been exported from the major metropolitan metropolitan areas to us. So everybody was asking, "How do you do that?" Well, we're not talking about the victims. We're not talking about the victims of, of drug abuse. We're not talking about that. We certainly aren't talking about the victims. I have been to, to three or four different seminars now on 
on the consequences to the families. And my family was affected by it as well. So we're not talking about that. And, and I have a, a lot of interest and a lot of education recently on, um, on how they're combating uh, the, the addiction of, uh, of drugs for a lot of our residents. But what concerns us and what's so negative and, and such a big problem for our community are these, are these exported criminal enterprises from the major metropolitan areas. So what can we do about them? Well, there's a program out there called the Enhanced Community Policing. Uh, it's been done in a number of areas, mostly in Florida during the, uh, the drug trade in the 80s when the cocaine was being imported uh, from the... From the um, I was watching the Ninja Turtles around then. You so were, but I was still there. around. I was still around. At any rate, they have used that. Now, I believe I'm going to win this race. So I'm not going to tip my hand and, they, and explaining it specifically, everything that's involved. But I have met with a couple of DE agents that work there that, that live in this area. They live out in Mercer. And I have met with uh, a number of people that are in our drug, our drug task force, as well as the DA. And there are ways that you can enhance, enhance the programs to really harass, to really harass these people who are doing it. Because everybody knows who they are. And everybody knows where they go and, 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 and what parts of the town where they're living. So there's ways that we can absolutely squash them. But I'm certainly not going to go out there and tip my hand. And I've been told not to tip my hand. So, but if anybody would, would, would really want to get into it, if they can come into my office, I'll certainly discuss it with them. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So that the DEA has been busy in the news, I hear. Yeah, actually, there, I believe there was a drug bust today. Yeah, there, yeah. Was, there was some big announcement or TVD, something like that I saw. So it's yeah, looking out for that. And and listen, I, I and, and I am not criticizing what they do. I, I certainly am not. What I'm saying is that a mayor's role should be should be really strong in it and, and let them know that listen, this is this is going to end. It's over. It's done. I'm going after these guys and I'm going after them with a vengeance. And they have to know that what a strong mayor can do. Because I believe I'm going to be a strong mayor. And when that occurs, and if it occurs, I'm going to be their worst nightmare. Yeah. And I, and I can promise you that. I guarantee you that. Yeah. They are they are polluting the minds and the bodies of the residents of this community. And you have to declare on that war in that group, and you have to take care of the victims of that. Drugs are a problem. They're a major problem. I mean, they're a major problem. You know, I've had a lot of employers tell me that a lot of people, they need people working in this community, but they had they don't have people who's able to pass the drug test. That's a problem for us. That's EQS, right? EQS is how I will call it still one. Yeah. They, I, is that rumor true? I, I've heard rumors of it. I don't know if that's I don't know if that's a legitimate rumor. I've or not. talked to the their plant manager and he's told me that people. He said that was yeah. he's told me that. And that's and and listen, they're not the only ones that, that have said that. Yeah. You know? If, when you're talking about, how about CBL commercial? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How about how about those people who, who look for truck drivers? You got to be able to pass a drug test. Tr yeah, truck driving. You know, it, essentially, that's a fifty grand a year job just to start. You mm -hmm. know, you can make millions doing that if you, if you do it right. If you do it right, sure. Yeah. But again, you know, you got to be clean. But so, you got to be clean. Yeah. And, and and listen, I certainly understand about the opiate opiate addiction and, and i understand that that there's people who are, who are addicted and yeah. it is tough some of them may have uh, you know they may have had surgery and they were addicted that way and and they're victims but as i said i've been to three different seminars now on on how to help those those people it, it's very interesting very informing steve true steve true i believe that's how you pronounce his last name um dan bailey uh, Angel Paper is involved in one, Dr. Jim Barber. Uh, I've discussed it with them, listened to what they had to say. It's it's an extremely good approach, a great approach, and I believe it's going to be expansive in our area in order to, to continue to, to fight against this horrible disease that affects all of us. All of us. So do you think it's do you think it's something that's that's more of a like an attitude or do you think it's because they don't have work? I mean we're the next question is plan for economic development. Oh yeah. So, 
do you think? It's do you connected. think those, those, I mean, they all kind of they intersect. All connect. You know, yeah. that's, that's the way, when you look at these questions, you're like, well, if we had this, if we had that, then it wouldn't be this and that. You yeah. know, Dan, everybody asked me, what do you think is the major problem confronting our city? Well, it's not one thing. It's a combination of things. It's yeah. everything together. Everybody talks about particles. Particles are a symptom of the things that, that, are, that are our problems. Particles are symptoms is a symptom of everything that's that's wrong in this community. So, you know, when you talk about it, let's go to economic development. Let's go there, okay? Economic development. First of all, we have an economic development board. There's one person in Newcastle on that board. That's a major problem. Who speaks for Newcastle? Who? If I'm if I'm the mayor, if you think you're going to have a, 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 an economic development board and you only have one person from Newcastle on it, well, you got another thought coming because I'm going to be on that board. I'm going to speak for Newcastle. I've said this at the NCAA meeting, NCAA, uh, NCAA, NCAA meeting. I said that um, we've given away our power, and we have. We've given it away, and and that's because that the surrounding townships have all done well, except us. Except us. Who speaks for Newcastle? You need a strong mayor that's able to do that. So, the, so this economic development person that you feel that they should have more people dedicated to them, better, you know, better you resources. Board? You said there was one person on. Yeah, there's one board. Linda Nitsch is on. Oh, okay. Yeah. She wants to be on the economic development board. But yeah. But what I'm, what I'm, the pre, the the point I'm trying to make is that as far as economic development, I understand that it's a county-wide thing, but Newcastle should not be left behind. And the the big part of that is that we don't ever go out and absolutely get out there and get grants and loans that would benefit specifically our city. And the way you do that is you have to go and get it. You've got to make your contacts in Harrisburg. Yeah. The governor has to know your name. You've got to go there, and, and the governor should be able to point you in the right direction. We don't do that. We might Now, they might say they do it, but they don't do it enough. They don't do it to my satisfaction, I can tell you that. Your campaign said you indicated that you were going to be sleeping there, right? I mean, oh, that's, yeah. that's the frequency that you're you yeah. on this. Well, I've said that, you know. Yeah, I, grant I, money. To, I told him that. I, I told the governor he's going to know me. Yeah. I told him face to face, you're going to know me. I remember that. And I remember and, that. You said that very early. And, and I've seen this done before. I was a councilman for 12 years. And the, the, I got to tell you, the mayors that, that were there at the time, the governor's known. The governor's known. So, and you think that's important. It's important to have that sort of it's that essential. Network. It's essential. It's, it's essential. essential. And, and 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 there's two parts of the economic development board. But the the one that that was that I found most humorous is that the economic development board. There's two parts, and one of them has uh, the majority of them. Uh, the majority of the um, of, of the people on in the seats were they were Republicans. So when you have a, a, a board full of Republicans and you're trying to dump a, a, the Democratic governor mm -hmm. and, and the governor is a Democrat, you're going to have a hard time getting any kind of money. You're going to have a tough time. So that, that, I, I believe that the city needs to intervene. I believe that the city needs to intervene on, on the development boards and say, look, we need representation on it and they need to be Democrats. They need yeah. to be Democrats. We have a Democratic governor. We need seats there, and they need to be Democrats. I'm going for money's there. One of the one of the questions we asked is where do you fall in line on the the political, the, the national political um, agenda? You, you mean know? as far as our the presidential stuff? Yeah. No comment. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm running for mayor. <laughs> right. Right. I'm running for mayor. So it's I have. It doesn't matter to you. It's more about fits and potholes. It's is, yeah. Is the is the listen, what you told me before? Listen, you know, I always pay attention to, to, to national politics because I, I asked this question yeah, to him before. Yeah, yeah. I, I always pay attention to national politics, but my main focus, everything my focus is on right now, are the are the challenges and the problems facing our city. They are many. They're complicated, and 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 you need somebody there that's going to attack this vigorously. You need somebody there that's going to be aggressive and relentless. And I have not, and I have to tell you this, I haven't paid attention to much national politics since I've been doing this. I haven't. So I'm not, I don't have, uh, at this point, I have no comment on, I have, I on Donald Trump and Joe Biden and the rest of them. I have no comment on that. 
you know, I haven't paid any attention at all to, to any national politics. I, I feel like I feel like it's more important we do things here first. Yes. You know what I mean? The, the, I don't I don't feel like Donald Trump's gonna put on a hard hat and fix my road. Well, you know, at the end of the day, I don't feel like I don't feel like what kills me too, and I'll tell you this, there's there's such a connection you know, there's such an emotional connection with where people lie on the national scale, but no one's saying, hey, yeah, I'm what, not here. What, yeah, why? I'm not here. Yeah, exactly. And, 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 and guess what? 13,000. What was it? 13,000 or 1,300 new voters. Oh, you mean in this last election for Donald yeah. Trump? Yeah. Yeah, you had, it, it was it was a very high turnout in the last general election. It was like, thir was it 13,000? It was about 13,000 registered in the city. 13,000 people were motivated enough. To do that, but That's thirteen thousand right. people, I guarantee you, won't make it out to this election. There's no way. Last primary election I ran, it was under thirty percent that vote. So yeah, it's under thirty percent. You have to go out there and you have. And to I have to say this, and I want to tell everybody this: the mayor affects you locally more than the president does. Yeah, the mayor affects you more. So. Not only so. that, but who do you think those? Who do you think they were catering to when they're looking when they're looking down the line of, of who's voting? You know. Yeah. It's, I'm not saying I'm not saying there's any sort of targeting going on, but I'm saying, you know, you pay attention to those things more because those are the people that have a better voice than you if you don't vote. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So we've got. Oh, this one. I add this one. Uh, exit plan for Act Forty Seven. Yeah, that's, that's that's the next one. That's a that's a big that's a that's big the albatross talking about. Yeah. That's the albatross. About. Here's the thing. We've been in Act Forty Seven since two thousand and seven. So if you read the report, there's 41 pages in that report. I've read the whole report. And the report will tell you, and I'm going to summarize. It basically says that, listen, you have no you have no vision, zero vision for revenue, and you have no projection, no projects for revenue. That's a problem. And here's the most, and here's what I just can't get over. I can't get over this. We have, you have to produce revenue to get out of Act 47. And we have no way to do it. Now, I understand that we have a declining tax base, and there's ways that you can raise money, but I'm convinced that the best way to raise money is through construction costs. Construction. That's the way you do it. And I've said this a number of times. We have 341 vacant lots in this community. We need to start building homes, and they can be mid-sized homes, too, only small homes. If you look, take a look, take a ride, go to Neshannon, go to Laurel, see how they build homes. And, and I'll put it in simple terms because I'm not a construction guy. They build homes horizontally. That's what they like. Look at the homes in Newcastle. How are they built? They'll be vertically. Now, everybody says, what the heck are you talking about? Well, now, yeah, can you elaborate on that? Yeah, I can I'm elaborate on that. Well, you, you live in Laurel, correct? Uh, correct. Yeah. Are you on a ranch style home? You like them, right? I do. Yeah. Now, I now do. go up in Newcastle and you see all these houses are real close together. Yeah, they have them all together, and they're and they're done vertically. So what my point? They're vertical. They're they're yeah, narrow. I got, I got yeah, you. they're narrow. So what my point? People don't want them anymore. They would like homes that ranch style homes. So we have double lots that we can do that. So that's true. I never yeah, thought about that. Yeah, you have double lots that you can do that. You have 341 lots. A lot of them are, are conjoined with another lot. So if you're going to go into through, through a construction phase, that generates revenue. That generates money. I believe that's essential to do that. Plus, you have a land bank that you're able to, to be able to, to, to have loans for for people who are first-time home buyers. Now, here's the problem that we have. We have a tax abatement program that, that is five years on any construction. However, our our Act 47 plan has a, it just a, they're just going to sign a three-year extension. What happens in three years? You still don't have any revenue. Right. You have to lower the tax abatement to three years. You have to to start generating revenue. You have to you have to lower the abatement program to start generating revenue. How do you get that act out of Act Forty Seven? You have to generate revenue. That's how you do it. Yeah, you're going to hit a three. Right now, it's three million. Right. We have to hit a three million gap before we can even come out there. You do. Nine hundred thousand of that came from construction. Well, right. that's ex yes, it, that that that's what they're saying to me. That's what they say the numbers are. Right. And and, and I'm not so sure, sure you lose a full three million dollars if, if you buy out of that forty seven. I'm looking at the statute, and there's different parts of it. There's some there's some parts of that you get. I'm not sure that that three million figure is accurate. I'm not sure. That's interesting. Don't I never I never heard I'm anybody sure. say that. I'm not sure it's accurate. Right, and I could be wrong, but I'm not sure. When I'm looked at it, I'm trying to decipher what it was saying. But I'm not sure. There's there's different parts of it. You'll verify it. Yeah. Right. You're gonna 
you believe you, you're not sure, you're going to verify. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. I don't have all the answers. I know people think I'm, I'm, I'm arrogant at times. I don't have all the answers. However, I, I've always been the kind of guy, if I don't have the answers, I know where to look for them. Yeah, it's, exactly. You know, I always said you're not the, you can't be the smartest guy in the room, but you just got to know who that guy is. No, right. Yeah. At the end of at the end of the day, you know, you let the professional be the professional. You, you have to have a good team. Well, I, and, and I'm glad you said that because you know, when I was a principal and, and a baseball coach, I coached baseball for years and years and years. I learned right. long. Yeah. I, I learned a long time ago that in order for you to be successful, you have to have people around you. You have people around you who are better than you. Yeah. You have to have confidence in in what you know, but the people around you have to be better than you. And I've always hired, especially coaches, I hired coaches who knew more than me in different aspects of the game. When I was a principal, I had 67 teachers underneath me. I believe our schools were successful when, when I was there. But it wasn't because Mark Lusco was a principal. Because I, I believe that I had some of the best teachers in the entire district in the county that worked for me. Yeah. And, and then you can delegate. And then you can bounce ideas. And you have a collaborative effort. And that's the keys to success. Running a municipality is no different than that. It's no different. You have to have people around you who are who are smarter in a lot of areas than you are. Yeah, it's it's absolutely important. That's yeah. yeah. And listen, I've said it before. I have spent a small fortune, well, a large fortune on this campaign. I haven't asked anybody for any money, nor will I ask anybody for any money. I've been preparing for this for five years. I've been funding my own campaign, and when you see the financial report, you'll see that you'll see what I spent, and you'll go, wow. And the reason was simply, and I'm not saying it for a pat on the back, I take this very serious, but I've been preparing for this for five years, every way that I can. And when I am when I win this thing, and I believe I'm going to win, the people around me aren't anybody, I don't know anybody, anything. The people around me are going to be, in the words of John F. Kennedy, the best and the brightest. That's because right. that's what it's going to take to bring this community back. Yeah. And i got to tell you this. Some of these other people are not talking about, are they aren't talking about the issues that are confronting this city. They're not. I can't imagine, I can't imagine that the, and, 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 and I don't mean to be disparaging against the mayor one bit, but he's been there for 12 years. Why am I running? I'm running because I believe I can do a better job than him. That's why I'm running. I don't know why, why the other ones are running. Because they're not talking about what his policies and issues are. You know, you have one candidate saying that, um, and again, I hate to be disparaging, but it is. It, but it, I'm, I'm talking the facts. Yeah. I'm talking the truth. The, the whole point is for us to have a conversation so everybody gets to know you. So it's important yeah. that you bring those things yeah. to life. So, so, it's so absolutely important. Yeah, you have one candidate talking about, um, he wants to raise a standard of, they want to raise the standard of living for every citizen. Another one wants to talk about solar panels. Well, that's great, but that, that's not a starting point. That's not a starting point. The issues are the policies of the mayor for the last 12 years and the state of the city today. That's the issue. Nothing more, nothing less. I've been criticized because some of them said, uh, some of the other candidates talked about uh, an irrelevant campaign. Remember we talked about that earlier, an irrelevant campaign. Why won't you debate me? Your campaign is irrelevant. It's not that that came from me. Every campaign, every single candidate that's not in office, you, your campaign is irrelevant. My campaign should be irrelevant to them. What I'm doing, what I'm doing has no bearing on what they should be doing. What they should be doing is looking at the policies of this, of, of this present administration for the last 12 years because that is the reason the city is in the state that it's in. Where should the crosshairs be? Right there in the administration. Yeah. Shouldn't so what the other so, candidates are doing is irrelevant to me. We're we are challengers. That's what we are. It's irrelevant to me. And so I know they you're saying it's a race. It's right? a it's race. A, it's a race. It's, it's a not, race. But it's what are you taking a personal for? Yeah, yeah. What are you taking a personal for? My campaign should be irrelevant to them. Yeah. It should be irrelevant to them. The only thing that's important are the issues that this city is faced with. That's it. Nothing else. Emotion runs high. You know, people got money involved. I can I can see why, um, but I, I like that answer. I, I really like that answer. Wow. It's, I mean, it's it's goal oriented. I mean, it really is. Listen, I, but but it's the truth. It's the truth. And I know. Listen, here's the thing. 
you know, I, I've learned this, and I've said this before, uh, and, and I always relate baseball to life, okay? And there's two types of baseball players. Those who are humble and those who are about to be made humble. Life's the same way. Those who, in, in, in life is going to humble you. So I believe in my life I've been humble. Here's the problem. When you're running for, for office, you can't be humble. you got to give people a reason to vote for you. you got to pound your chest and say, look, I'm better than this guy and this is why. Some people take offense to that. But that's what a campaign is. How else am I going to convince anybody to vote for me? You feel like nobody wants to vote for a loser, right? Well, nobody wants yeah. to support. Nobody I'm, wants to support. I'm self-confident what I'm saying I, I'm going to do, but I'm not self-important. There's a difference. And, 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 and I know how it comes off. You know, some people say I'm angry. I'm not angry. I'm frustrated. This fired is the community. Up. I said I'm fired, fired up. up. I'm, yeah. I, I'm frustrated. This is the community I grew up in. Do I like what I see? No. I, here's the thing. I, I'll say this about you. I, 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 I spent... I, I mean, I, I've had enough interactions with you to say that it's just a commanding presence. Maybe maybe you don't even know how you are, but it's just a very commanding presence. That, maybe some people, you feel maybe some people might be even threatened by that. Well, I would hope not because I'm, a, I, I, I'm not that way. Maybe, I, I don't know why, maybe it was my upbringing. You know, I grew up, my father was in the military for 37 years. He's a World War II vet. He was a sergeant. So... Uh, he, he he was not an easy guy, <laughs> you know. He never told me what I wanted to hear. Always told me what I needed to hear. Right. And that's how my brother and I had to have grown, have grown up. And and maybe I, I have the the genetic propensity from him in his military bearing. I don't know. But um, listen, this is something that I think I was I was born to do. Uh, I I love the campaign. I love government. I love the challenge that's presented to me with this city. If this city was going just smooth and everything was nice and there's money's coming in, Mark Alisco wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be running for office. But I believe that I have the ability to really turn this community around. And I know how hard it's going to be. I certainly understand the challenges. But I'm a guy. I'm an anal guy. I'm a guy. I'm like a shark. Once I put my teeth into something, I'm not letting go. I'm not. And I'm going to go at this thing 24-7. I've said this before, that... Just when you become the mayor at five o'clock, you're not. It, it's not that you're no longer the mayor. You're still the mayor. Your phone better be on, and everybody needs to have my my phone because somebody's going to call and they need help, and you need to react to that, and it needs to be done now. So I know what I'm getting into. Believe me. How do you feel about the current transparency of our government? Well, listen, and everybody talks about that, and, 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 I, and I hear what you're saying, and I know a couple campaign, a couple candidates went out there and said, hey, you know, I'm all for transparency in government. Well, I don't know who is it. That's not a, a, that's not a, distinguish, a distinguishing characteristic of OSA for somebody. Yes, I'm for transparency. You have the sunshine law that says that you have to be transparent. I'm not out there to hide anything, ever. If and when I become mayor, it's going to be open. I'm going to be transparent. If you want to know what's going on, all you're going to have to do is ask me. Yeah. You know, th th there's nothing, there's, there's nothing to hide. Nothing to hide when you're working in local government. That's it. And listen, when you're working in local government, you're out there with the people all the time. They're certainly, they certainly have an understanding of what's going on, and they're going to ask you the questions. And I have no and, problem. And you yeah. got an answer. To and it. you got an answer and, to and it. Especially now, and you know, and I, I talk about this with everybody. It's a digital community now, mm -hmm. and you've got to answer the, the problem with the the current administration is that they don't really answer to the digital community. So they don't have those micro conversations. You know, that's important to have now. And you've gotten you've gotten pretty good at it recently, actually. Um, you mean responding? responding to things and that's important you know to, to maybe put yourself out there a little bit uh, yeah you're going to face some scrutiny but you also you also are communicating mm -hmm. and, and touching those people you know those like i said those micro conversations are, are the, of the utmost importance because now you're there yeah you're and, there and you're talking about social media primarily primarily yeah. social media but you know it, but everywhere everywhere in general yes you know? yes and and you know and I, i'm a guy i would prefer face-to-face -face discussion I, I, that's what I like. I mean, I grew up that way. And social media is, is new to me. You know, I ran four years ago, and this never existed. Never. Uh, 
Yeah, you're saying, yeah, I did, Mark, but we didn't do it. <laughs> okay, MySpace. Yeah, we yeah, were, MySpace. We, Mark's line, we were friends on MySpace. Oh, were we? No. No, I didn't think so. <laughs> I never did that. But anyway, uh, the, the point is that it's hard for me to respond to a, a lot of those things. Um, yeah, but not, I'm learning to. Not everybody's expecting yeah. everything. Yeah, 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 and you can't respond to everything because yeah. you know, you know, you're, you're, it'll be a running argument. I don't want to get into running exactly. Argument. There's some people you yeah. don't want to respond yeah. to too. There's some things you don't want to even validate with comments. You know, and, yeah, um, and that's I and I agree with that methodology. You know, I agree. It, you know, you you've got to pick your battles. You've got to you know, it, but it's important now. You know, yeah. it, it is important to have those micro conversations. And, and probably the, the reason why I'm more involved in, in social media now is because, you know, I, obviously, if I'm going to be the mayor of this community, I want everybody to know who I am and I want them to know me. And so uh, so that's that's one reason why I've been so involved in, in, in social media at this point. There are a lot of demographics to this. There's a lot of ways that, that now you have to reach voters. You have to do it by the paper. You have to do a personal communication, personal um, contact. You have to do it by social media, and you have to send mailers out. So we're doing all of those things. We're doing all of those things to try to hit every demographic so they can understand and know who Mark Melissa is. You know, I had one guy, and, and we've been working all the neighborhoods. I'll share this with you. Because you can never be everything to everybody. I know that. Right. I'm in this realm. I know some people are, are going to think I'm a jerk. Have you have you ran into have you ran have. into some bad door dogs? I have. Can we talk about yeah, that? Yeah, listen. Yeah, listen. It just happened in Mahoney Town just the other day. Shout out to Mahoney Town. Yeah, listen. Well, first of all, we went to the east side. We were on the North Hill. We were in Mahoney Town. You know, and and most people, ninety nine percent of them are very very nice <laughs> and they're very good. You know. Right. Right. But, right. I went to but it's gonna happen. It's gonna it's happen, gonna happen and it happens every single candidate. So I went up to this guy and I said, Hey, I'm Mark Liske, I'm from America. Here's my fly. He looked at me, I don't want your fly. I said, You don't want me to lay here. He said, No, I just stored away. I know who you are, get off my yard. Okay, I'm out of here. I don't know why, I don't know who he was, I have no idea. But listen, that happens. What do you want to do? You can never be everything to everybody. That's great. Never. You got to do it. <laughs> people don't understand, but the worst thing is the worst thing is is the next door. <laughs> you know, the, you like you, know, you got it now. You're like, oh, you got next. Know. But then you I don't get know what he's people. telling. His Listen, name. you get other people, especially those ethnic people. Uh, you know, you knock on their door, they want you to come in and drink some samosa. You know, that was great. Oh yes, yes. And so you got to do it. So you take a couple sips. Next thing you know, when you're walking, your knees don't hurt. We you float. We just went to, uh, we came back from Greece in February, last February, mm -hmm. and that's all they did. Everybody invites you in their oh, house. They invite you in your house, yeah. yeah. A, lot, a lot of people do that. They invite you in a lot. So yeah, you're going to always get one or two that, that are upset for whatever the reasons are. You know, I, I learned in interpersonal communication classes, sometimes it's not you. Sometimes you're just having a bad day. Yeah, exactly. There's nothing anybody says to you. Anything anybody says to you is a projection of their own emotion onto you. So there's nothing you can do. About You're in marketing, right? I uh, am. Yeah. What's the rule? You got to get through a lot of no's before you get your yes. Yeah. Our our uh, our saying is pick up the phone, hit the button, hit the button, hit the button, just hit dial the, the next call. But button. but and, and and I have to say this, my campaign, and I believe this wholeheartedly, has been relentless. It's been persistent and it's been aggressive. And I believe that how you campaign is how you govern. We are demonstrating that we are moving ahead. Our campaign has been going on. I've been studying this for five years. Our, I've been campaigning for the last four years. I lost on December 15, 2015, and I lost by 26 votes. You know when I started campaigning for this job? The very next day. The very next day. In the last year and a half, our campaign has been going strong. Now, we're not stopping. We're not stopping. We're going to go all the way up until that last day. But that, and the reason I'm doing this is because I'm demonstrating to everybody in this community. If I, if and when I become mayor, that's how we're going to govern. We're governing the same way. You're Relentless, good. persistent, and aggressive. That's, that's a good answer. That's a, that's a great answer. So if, if I, I've got to ask you this, this is from Janet Antonio, mm -hmm. one of the most active users, uh, you know, in, inside of our community. Yes. Yeah. Um, you actually had a run in with her today where you answered yeah. some, some things. She seems like a nice lady. She she actually is. She's, she's, she's no pushover. She likes to <laughs> she yeah, wants to no, answer. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I don't yeah. know. But uh, that said that said hi Janet. 
But uh, where's the money coming from to fix the road? That's, yeah. that's her question. That's and the big question. On the boat. Sure. And, and I think, and again, I, I, I think that the question needs to be answered. So there's two things to this. And one of it is Restore Pennsylvania. Restore Pennsylvania is a is an initiative done by the government that we haven't went after yet. We still haven't gone after yet. Right. That does two things. It's for infrastructure improvement in your community, and it's also for blight. And there's monies out there. Literally billions that the governor put in this initiative. Four third class cities and Western PA is a is a target area for them. We haven't gone out and got it. That is exactly what those funds are for. Now, there are other things you can do too. You can take out a bond. We have money, and I know everybody said, Oh no, 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 no. It, it increases your debt. I get that. But we do have money in a rainy day fund and you can start making payments. You you, you end up being in a conundrum. Here you are. You have an infrastructure that's crumbling, but you're trying to you're trying to um, you're trying to get businesses to invest. Now they're not going to come here if your roads are crumbling. They're just not going to do it. So you need you you are in a conundrum where you're going to have to fix the roads, and you have to do it as smart as you possibly can, in order for that for any investor, any developer to come into this community. If you don't, then you have economic stagnation. So if you have to take out a bond to start doing it and use a wise payment plan to do it and get and get grants like from Restore Pennsylvania, then it has to be done. It has to be done. But it's not something that can be done right now. Everybody's going to want their roads done right now. It, it's not going to happen. It's, yeah, it's, just it's not going to happen. It's going to be over a three, four year period that it happens. Have you seen the, the unique pothole identification we've started? Have you seen anything? I, I, just bits of it. So it's, yeah. it's essentially what it does is it targets every pothole in the city and gives it a lifetime. Yes. And, <laughs> and from there, from there, you can determine, you know, where the exact problem areas are fixed. Sure. Yeah. And so it's it's not it's not it's kind of a band aid, yeah. I guess, for road repair. But what it does is gives you, hey, these are the red, these are the hot. Those are these tough areas. Yeah, yeah, these are the tough areas. And you know, it's interesting you say that because look, I, it, how are how are problems solved? They're solved by information. Now, how do you get information? There's a lot of ways to get information. What I've noticed getting out in a community is that there are a lot of people who want to be involved. And I've said this earlier, you get ward captains, you get ward captains that identify, hey, this is what my road looks like. And, and these houses in my neighborhood, they're blighted. We need to, we need to address them. You get a ward captain in every precinct, every precinct, and have them meet with you bi-monthly. And have them say, okay, what's wrong with your neighborhood? That's actually a good it's idea. It's a great idea. What's wrong with your neighborhood? Let's write it down. And then, then we prioritize. And then what you do, you got everybody in the precincts, everybody in the ward sitting around you. Okay, we got all your problems. We got all your issues. Now, let's, let's together prioritize and see how are we going to handle this? How are we going to handle this fight? I got this amount of money. This seems to be a major problem. What's That's that? the way it's done. So what what you're saying is and it's free. Each, each each area has its own sort of representation. No doubt. In, inside and, and has, you know, direct access to well, everybody should have direct access to you, but has a, a, a sort of uh, they have to report to you or yeah. not, not necessarily report to you, but they have an obligation. Let's call it that. Let's go to Mahoney Town. They have a response. Mahoney Town has always filled isolated. They've always felt that there's never any representation, never there. I went to their, their neighborhood watch meetings, and I'll tell you what, there had to be 14, 15 guys. I knew them all. I played ball with all of them. Yeah, and these sure. guys, and these guys, you I know, know them what? all, too. You know them all, sure. And these guys, you know what? They're tough guys. And and they're saying, look. Yeah, they, don't do crime in Mahoney. No, it's not no, they, no, they will confront you. Yeah. If they see you stalking around the neighborhood, they're confronting you. Yeah. But anyway, these guys are tough guys, and, and they're coming out, and they're saying, look, these are the issues with, with Mahoney Town. And this is what needs settled. And you know that they have an issue with that um, it, that one area where the, the flooded one, street, that flooded street, that that the trestle goes over that. So, and they want that handled. So, at, at any rate, that they should be involved in these projects where they come into the city, where they come into the government building, say, okay, these are my issues. How are we going to handle this? That needs to be done. And those guys, those don't come and do it. This is a free way to get information. Free. And and then and then because here's what you have to think about. You think let's say somebody on Clayton Street. You really think that they care that I'm fixing a pothole on on Ryan Avenue? They don't. They don't. Yeah. But if they have an understanding, look, we got to do Ryan Avenue first, and never come to you. And this is why. 
then you have a, then everybody understands. Yeah, yeah, it'll, it'll work. work. But if you answer, you know, you you, you got to answer, and that's that's the absolute best it, way. To it'll do work, it. and it's a good way of doing it. And, and, and it's it's logical. It's simple. We call that crowdsourcing, which is is similar to what I did with the with the uh, identifier. It's that you know you have a community of people. Why not access them? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and they want to get involved, they, and yeah. they want to be exactly. They want people to want to help people. People want to be involved in local government, and it just feels like it's kind of out of reach. And our biggest goal here is just that: is mm -hmm. to get people involved. And I think, I think that you know, it's a start. You know, I think that um, I think that ward captain. I, that's the first of anybody, uh, anything I've ever heard anybody say like that. But that's um, that's absolutely something that, in my mind, I always said to myself, "How could that? How could this be that?" But a uh, yeah, ward captain. That's that's a good answer. Oh, I think it'll work. I yeah, mean, I, I I'm convinced that it, it would so, be, it'd be a good thing. So, yeah. so here's a, the next question comes from Laura Colvin, mm -hmm. and how will the city? Hold slum lords accountable for their actions or lack thereof when it comes to taking care of their property slash tenants. I love that question, and 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 I'm glad I heard that. I I met in front of the the real estate, no, the landlords association a month ago. There was 15 of them sitting there, and one they're man, getting bigger. They're getting bigger. One man had the audacity to ask me. Here's what he asked me. He said, Mark, if I buy a home in one of your neighborhoods. And I buy the home, and then I realize I don't have enough money to fix it up, and it continues just to deteriorate. What are you going to do? <laughs> I said, I can't believe you asked me that question. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I said, before you buy the home, I'm going to give you timelines in order for you to get things done. If you don't get things done, I'm going to do everything in my power to take that property off of you. Because once you buy that property, you have a responsibility to stick it, to, to, to do it. You have a responsibility to get it done. Because my responsibility is everybody around you. Everybody, all the residents around you is my responsibility. Right. So you have a responsibility to do what you, what you say you're going to do. And if you don't do it, don't tell me you don't have the money. You should have known that going in when you bought the place. Yeah, that's what property costs. That's what it costs. Yeah. So you better, you better do what you're saying you're going to do. And if not, if I got to go in and take that property off you, you're gonna, it's, it's going to be taken off. And you forfeit your money. And you know what the rest of those land owners me, did? They applauded that. Let me tell you, let me, this is a great point to bring up. Speaking of properties, um, you were very vocal. I watched one of your videos. And which one? We put out 15 of them. You know which one. <laughs> the, the, the hospital project video. The, yes. most recent, the most recent video. Um, you were very vocal about that. that you had a ton to say. I... I, I Go, just just go. let's talk let's about go. it. Let's, let's talk do it. about it. Let's uh, let's just talk about it. I've so, been at this game a long time. This isn't my first rodeo. Yeah. And 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 I know a political ploy when I see it. I listen, I know what I'm saying about the <laughs> portfolio. What what he was saying about uh portfolios is what people do is they'll buy properties for less amounts of money and then you put that into a real estate portfolio and to get expense. a loan. So if you pay twenty five thousand to buy a hospital but that hospital is worth seven hundred and fifty thousand. Now you have a portfolio that you can that you can put a loan out against that it's appraised value, and that's that's I, I'm just explaining what yeah. that what he was saying by that. I'm not saying that's happening here. I don't know, yeah. but you know that's that's what. That's where what there's smoke, there's fire. Alluding. Yeah, where there's smoke, there's fire. You know, uh, he, here's the thing, and, and I was on council for three terms, and so I know how this stuff works. When you know when you have a project like this, there's certain things that have to happen. Council should have known. They didn't. They had no idea. They've heard rumors of it, but they were never approached and said, hey, this is nobody was aware of it. Nobody was aware of it. I talked to Councilman Toscano. I mean, I'm sorry, Councilman Fulkerson, Stefano, and um, and Smith. None of them knew. I never got a chance to meet with any of those guys, but I, I hear they're all very, very good. Very sure. Good. Yeah, they're good guys. Yeah. None of them knew. Not, not one of them knew. That's number one. So today, I am so tired of people coming into our city, buying businesses, and then there's no timelines on it. None. In other words, four months, what, what type of improvement am I seeing? Six months, what type of improvement am I seeing? No accountability. No, there's no accountability. Nothing. We have no guarantees to this, to this project. All we know is somebody, we don't know where they're from, 
West Carnell Health has some has some legal issues pending against them. But no matter no matter besides all that, besides all that, you have no guarantees and you need guarantees today. I'm tired of investors taking advantage of our community. I want safe monies. In other words, if you're coming in and you're buying that, that project for $25,000, guess what? You're giving me a like a month because if you don't do it, if you don't do it, I'm, that's a forfeit fee. Yeah, that's a forfeit fee for me. I'm either going to market your play, I'm going to going to market, I'm taking it off of you. And all those things have to be done. It's not done. And listen, I'm not saying, and, and another thing, that we're talking about veterans rehab. It's been done before. We've had it here before. It does not, it, listen, it was a great move. 300 jobs, you get headlines. It doesn't employ 300 jobs. If you believe that, I got a bridge for you to sell Mahoney Town and call it divide off. It's probably 30, it's probably 30 jobs at most. That's what the industry, that's what the industry begs. That's what it does. So where do you think they got that 300 number from? <laughs> speculation? Yeah, so speculation, sure. Is. Listen, here, here's the thing. Maybe it, it could happen, maybe, but to put it out now, to put it out now, when nothing else is in place, is a pure political ploy. That's what it is. There's nothing else more to it than that. Okay. So, uh, and, and listen, again, I, I believe I am going to be an aggressive marketer for this community. But if you make an investment in my community, you are going to have some skin in the game. You're going to have some skin in the game. And you're going to have some responsibilities to carry it out. And if you don't, I'm coming in and taking it after you, taking it over after you, because I believe our city, with the right people around us, can market it as well as anybody else. And we got businesses, we got places that should be marketed. I say this over and over again. The days in should be marketed. You got you got free parking right there. Free parking. Office incubators are the way to go. I've seen it done in many places, especially Pittsburgh. Those those places are perfect for office incubators. You have free parking, and there are grant monies that will let you buy it off the private owner so that you can virtually give it away to somebody who you know will do something with it. Calls from, the, from the slack economy is what they call it. Yes. So uh, to, to clarify what he's saying is there is nowadays everybody kind of works from home or is a 1099 employee. Uh, that works remotely. These, these office incubators are small office spaces that they can come to and, and work, and, and it actually generates a lot of money. Yeah, uh, it, it does. It, it generates a lot of money. The, the offices are obviously premium spaces, and you know people prefer to work there that can't work from home or have uh, strict regulations on what they can and where they can and can't work at. So those are those are definitely. Um, those are those are job creations in in themselves. They are. They, and, they really are. Andrew Matt is doing something similar, although although his objective is mostly dental insurance and dental group, and and he's doing it down at the Northwest Dental Group downtown. Um, yeah. And I went in his place. He has a, he probably has about 150, 160 people working there, and it's all in different sections. You know, it, it it's like North American Dental Group. Yeah, is that North American running? Dental. Group. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's set up as as an office incubator system. And it's it's beautiful. Perfect. I was just so impressed with it. So why can't that be done elsewhere? Why can't it be done there? The, the days in has been sitting there for what, 15 years, 18 years. Are you kidding me? I'm in a hurry. I've said this before. I'm in a hurry. I'm not going to sit on that thing for 18 years. Yeah, it's no point. Are you kidding me? No Come on. You got to work, but you got to work. You got to work. You got to work at the job. You got to work at getting those things filled. You know, when you have to, by phone here's phone. the thing. When you're the mayor today, you have to have a course of attack and you have to stay on course. You can't get off chart. You can't get off offline. Off you got to stay the fight and you got to stay focused on it until it gets done. That's the way you accomplish goals. I've, I've done that in, in the school system. Everything I've, I've ever been a part of, that's, that's what you do. Stay focused, stay on chart and follow that path the whole way. Don't get thrown off because yeah. a lot of places will get you thrown off. A lot of times yeah. can't do it and i think that's happens to us you know we, we we have an idea we start it and then we get sidetracked yeah. and you're and not some, getting sidetracked this time i'm not getting sidetracked no way i ain't i'm not getting sidetracked but i can multitask too you know yeah <laughs> I'm, that's all I'm, I'm multifaceted so that that actually kind of hits our 
we talked about what your plans are with code enforcement to control blight. That, mm -hmm. that was that was pretty easy. That was from Jeremy Morozik. Um, Stephen Ramey said, uh, "How do you propose to encourage people and small businesses to move to Newcastle?" So that kind of we kind of did talk about that, but not in that capacity. Well, so definitely touch on that. Yeah, I, and, and I want to you know you know there's three parts to this, and this is another conundrum. This is the the problem that we have in this city. It's why it, it, it's so it's so it's such a challenge. You have the wage tax, the business privilege tax, and you have the mercantile tax. Okay, so now all those rates are higher than the townships. So now you're a lawyer. You want to come in and you want to you want to put offices here. But my business privilege tax is higher than the Shannon Shenango. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are you going? Yeah, where are you going? Well, <laughs> take a look at what I did. I mean, my my taxes here. You know, there's there's no point in me coming here and paying taxes right. when I can go somewhere else and pay less taxes. Less taxes. You know, so it's it's not it's not really a con it's not really competitive. Right. It's so not. So we we talked. I have a very good friend from Nashville, mm -hmm. and he always asked me to ask everybody this question: Is how do you plan on competing with sovereign labor? Yeah. How do you it's do it? It's a tough it's a yeah. tough thing to do because I can you know it's southern labor you can make. Because there's no, it's right to work states. Yeah. It's, it is, I can walk in for the same, I, for less money, I can make more money. As a, as a employer, I can pay people more money. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so that's, that's a good combination. Yeah. It's hard to compete with. It is. And, and, and so, well, that's the dilemma we're in. That's the dilemma we're in. So what you have to do, this is my opinion. Here's what you have to do. First of all, you have to market yourself as the mayor. You have to be able to go to different business people and investors and go to them and, and first establish a, 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 some communication where they actually look at you and they have some, some confidence in what you can do for the community. I don't believe that, that any investor, any business people have any confidence in what we do right now. And they told me that. So that's number one. And then after they do that, you have a dilemma because if you are financially stressed, you can't lower it because you're going to lose some money. However, if you make an agreement with them, say, listen, give me a year. Give me one year, and then we'll lower that. Give me a year, let me generate some revenue, and then we'll lower it. I think some people you can convince to do that then. As long as they see an end in the tunnel, and they know that they can buy the building cheaper down here, yeah, they can buy the building cheaper, the and I say, listen, I'm not giving you a tax abatement program for five years because it's going to kill me, yeah. but I can... I will lower your mercantile tax or yeah. your or your privilege tax. Or your waste tax building for ten thousand dollars. And you're buying a building 000. for ten thousand. Yeah. If you go to Nishan and can buy it, that same building, you're paying fifty, sixty, seventy thousand. And guess what? You're getting the same labor. And you're getting the same. Yeah, it right? doesn't make a difference. Yeah. So th I think that's the route that you have to go. And, and and there's no other way to find it. There's no other way to find it. Yeah. Other yeah. than that. Yeah, but yeah, you've got to go get them. Yeah, you've got, <laughs> you you've, go got, you've got to have somebody that, yeah, wants, to, that to wants to even compete, you know, <laughs> yeah. somebody that wants to step on the field. So, okay, okay, that's a good answer. Uh, how will you support after-school prevention programs for our youth? Again, that's Laura Colton. Yeah, but I have degrees in that stuff. That's easy. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah, it's I easy. I think of that. Yeah. That's an easy, I that's had, a very um, easy. I mean... As a principal, that's, that's, that's all you do. Yeah, that's yeah. a wiffle ball. Shift me a softball. As a principal, <laughs> that's all you do. Yeah, but 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 I'm I'm going to go there for a second. I mean, that's all you do. I, I mean, I ran after school programs for uh, tutoring, after school pro programs for PSSA testing. I ran after school programs for athletics. Uh, you know, the tentacles are everywhere for that, and kids love doing that. But here's the thing, and and here's what we don't don't do since it, since we're talking about schools, we don't wed the entities. By that I mean the the city and the and the school district both have limited resources, but they have the same challenges in a lot of areas. You need to wed them in order to meet those challenges where they where, where they both and where they both um, are where it would be advantage to both of them to both sides. You know what I'm saying? What, what you're saying is is those those two things they don't. There's really not a, a lot of. It, I believe it can be more. Yeah. Moving parts. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I believe there I could, that there could be more. Good. I'm sure they they have some collaborative right, efforts, right, right. but I believe it could be more. When I was a principal, there was very little. There was very little collaboration. Um, let me give an example. Everybody forgets recreation. Recreation is 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 a big source, I believe, 
uh, of, uh, of enjoyment, enjoyment in a community. I've always said a community that has lost its, it, it, its ideas and values for recreation has, has lost its soul. There is nobody else that can better um, provide programs for the kids than the city and the school district combined. Can you define recreation? Yeah. What do you mean by recreation? Every league, every league that that, that we have, from from youth football to baseball to softball to soccer to every single program that we have, to girls softball, everything. So if you look at, let me give you an example. Let me stop you. Actually, on uh, Friday, the Jordan Lyles is coming on to talk to us about the the youth football league. So stay tuned for yeah. that. Jordan's a good guy. So if, if if you look at it, let me give you another example. One way we did do collaborative thing, collaborative effort was the um, the city had the school district lease Flair to fill for one dollar. So the school district took over, but they did it all by themselves. I was the chief administrator for Flair to fill, obviously because I was a baseball coach. Right. So, but the city didn't do anything. They would help out if we needed it. Right. They would help out, but the school district leased it for uh, off the city for one dollar, and then they took over the the full um, efforts to, to renovate right. the ball field. To, to so. Made. But th that's one example. But there's other areas we can do that. Let me give you another example. Um, if you go down to the Deschamps complex, the road that it was extensive, I believe that's Frank Avenue back here. I'm terrible. But, but then there's three entities that, okay, there's three entities that use that. Uh, Newcastle uses it for its baseball program and girls softball program. Votech uses it, and then the Army National Guard uses it. Those roads look like hand grenades are going off down there. Hand grenades. Now, should that be a high priority for Newcastle to fix when they got other streets? Probably no, not. No, but no. should it be a little bit of a priority? Yes. And how do you get it done? I go to Votec and I go to the National Guard Army and say, guys, we need a collaborative effort to pay these roads. You guys use it. The Army uses its vehicles on it. And, and we got people going down there playing baseball, softball. It's a lot of them from out of town because they run tournaments. So how can we collaboratively come up with funds to fix those roads? Youngstown did it. They worked a collaborative effort with the National Guard to demolish neighborhoods that were blighted. National Guard and the city. We don't do it. We um, isn't there isn't there some program that we got funding from for for Karen Bell homes? What? But yeah, the homes are fixing right now. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm sure there's. I'm, I'm sure they got some money. I don't remember. I don't remember. I, I remember talking about it. But but I believe that that we could do that, especially with the school district. In terms of recreation and in other areas, after school programs, the city and the, and the school district should be able to have collaborative efforts to, to do things. And the other entities that are here in this community should do it as well. Yeah, Dawn are, networks are doing things Dawn that services. Dawn services are doing things that the shit that the city should be doing. I, I heard about those guys. They are. Yeah. They're very good. Yeah. Go to the Lower East Side, they'll tell you all about it. So the next question comes from Raymond DeCarlo. And okay. It says it's got a lot of votes. It's got enough votes. It says, "Will you keep a balanced budget to protect the taxpayers of the city?" So, balanced budget. Will you keep it? No. No. Who's going to say no? Moving on. <laughs> yeah. Who's going to say That's no? That's a no. That's an official no. <laughs> what <laughs> candidate is going to say no to that question? <laughs> All right. So there's that. Um, let me let me try and let me try and rephrase this. How do you plan on keeping a balanced budget to protect taxpayers? Uh, so essentially, what he's saying, what he's really asking for is taxes. I'm a fiscal conservative. I am fiscal conservative. I am okay. very. I, I'm uh, I'm liberal in a lot of things, but I'm a fiscal conservative. So um, and, and I'm cautious with my money. However, uh, with somebody else's money, I'm extra cautious. And and those are the taxpayers' money. Um, I pay my taxes every year. I'm, uh, I'm on top of it, and and I don't want anybody to misuse my tax dollars either. And so, uh, with that said, um, you have to work within your budget, and and you have to look at ways to raise revenue um, so that you're able to do the things that you want to do. Yeah. That takes a lot of work, and and I can, and I'm here to tell you, I'm mentally and physically prepared to do that extra work. So. And and, and 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 listen, I make fun of that question. It's not a dumb question. It, it, it's a legitimate question. Um, and it's it, it takes a lot of effort and it takes a lot of work to do that because people demand services. People demand services. 
And and a guy out there, a guy that's running a private business will say, well, cut your staff. Well, you, it, it, you hate to do that, right? You hate to do that because you're taking people's livelihood away. But what is your alternative? What else can you do in order in order to be able to provide services and, and stay under budget? The only thing you can do is think out of the box, look for other sources of revenue, go to Harrisburg, get grants and loans, and tell them, listen, we've got 14 other cities that are getting out of Act 47, or that will be getting out of Act 47. Yeah. You need to help us. And you need to help us. And utilize. And I'll sleep in the governor's office. I'm not being facetious. I sl I'll sleep in the governor's office to get it done. I worked at, at the, the football camp for Lindy Laurels when I was coach football. I slept outside half the time. So I can sleep He's, in the governor's office. No problem. It's warm in there. It's, <laughs> they've got air conditioning. Um, <laughs> I'd like to see that. I'd like to see you just, you know, roll up a sleeping bag or tent or something and inside the secretary's You'll office. get attention. I, would, I mean, he'll, you'll, you'll get attention, guaranteed. He'll do something. Um, <laughs> but, but listen, and, and, and yeah. you know, when I said, I you, you have to be, you, you have, and, and this is no kind, and I say this with all due respect, you have to be mentally and physically prepared to do this position that's coming. The challenges are great. And, and, I, have to t and I have to say this, you know, and I have all, all respect. I know no one, he may not believe this, but I have a lot of respect for the mayor. I do. I, I, I really do. The man has been there 12 years, and he doesn't want to give up that torch. He's still holding it. And I admire that. I'm trying to grab it off of him. I wish he'd just give it to me. But obviously, he, you know, he's not, he's yeah, not it, going to. You know, he's tenacious. I'll and I admire that. that. I, you know, obviously, the you only hear secondhand mm -hmm. what... You know he's like until you until you finally meet him, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of tough there are a lot of tough choices mm -hmm. that the voters have to make. Oh yeah, you know yeah. Um, that guy that guy sharp as ever. You he know, is it, sharp. It's it's he, you yeah. know you can you can definitely tell you know he's all yeah. there and yeah. and um but but he, he, here's and here's the thing and, and and I agree with that you know you know he certainly knows numbers. But you know you got to have yeah, leadership. Got a good handle. Yeah, you got to have leadership qualities, and you got to be, you got to be able. This is a physical job today, and and, and I have to tell you, so you I said it best: pass the torch. You got to yeah. pass the torch, um, and you have to know when it's time. You do, um, and, and believe me, I'm not being disparaging. I, I'm just saying this: age is an undefeated opponent. It is, and I say this with all respect. It it will diminish you mentally and physically with a hundred percent certainty. And, and, and I know that I can get in trouble for saying that, but it's a fact of life. It's a fact of life. And at the same time, I have to tell you this. I do. I, I do admire the man because I know that he he wants to stay. And, and I, I know that he's been there 12 years. And nobody else has done that. Nobody else has been there 12 years. But it's time to pass the torch. And, and, and I think that, that it, 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 the time is now. My opinion. We'll, we'll leave it right at that. Yeah. Um, so, Audrey, and I, I can't pronounce your last name. We, we just talked over the phone. It's, I'm not going to attempt it. Audrey, you know who you are. Uh, what is your position regarding, that's probably her texting me right there. What is your position regarding the proposed dollar store in the residential North Hill and proposed commercial overlay on Highland Avenue? So, what is your position regarding the proposed dollar store? Yeah, and there's a apparently a commercial overlay. Well, it would. Uh, but I oh, think what oh, she, oh, it, okay. Yeah, what she's saying is that you're gonna have to rezone. You're gonna have to change Who's, the zoning for that portion. I think yeah, that's what she's yeah, asking. Yeah, the zoning board. Yeah. Needs it. You know that that that's a loaded question, and, and I understand that that people were um, people were, were split as as the with that as with yeah, that should do. I mean, it was very yeah. controversial. You yeah. know, um, but I, I here's what I have to say. The city is in is a fiscal stretch. There's no doubt about that. So so what do you do there? What do you do? I like revenue. I'm looking to generate revenue. So I'd have to look at that area, take a good look at it, and see exactly what are the consequences of it going there. In addition to that, exactly what does that building look like, and does it enhance the neighborhood? And then what type of revenue am I getting out of that? So Alexandria, Virginia, mm -hmm. has a very you know, way more historically rich 
uh, place than, than Newcastle. Uh, well, I guess that's a matter of opinion. In my opinion, mm -hmm. Alexandria, Virginia has it. And they have a sort of building code that's, you know, as long as it fits in the building, yeah. you know, I don't think that'd be a problem for, I think that's a win for everybody. Well, and, and I've talked to other, when this is going on, and I'm not privy to all the information, you know, I just go by what I read in the paper. So, you know, I, I don't know how much it, it really ruins the integrity of the neighborhood. I don't know if it infringes on the historical area, and I don't know what the revenue would be from that. So for me to answer it one way or another would be very difficult because I don't have all the information. Yeah, you, you have to yeah. weigh it out. So from what I know, I, so, I understand that it, that is, it, it is a tough question. Give some theoretical number yes and give some theoretical number no. Yeah, how about that? Right, yeah, that's good. If the revenue was too much for me to turn down, and I have no idea what it is, Mm -hmm. And and the number of employees and the number of employees was was great. Where again, I get money from wage tax. You know, if those things were were, were a way that it made an impact, I would probably lean towards that. Now, at the same time, if if, if none of those issues were there and it really really compromised the integrity of the neighborhood, then then I may have declined. But I have to tell you, from just on the outside looking in. Um, and talking with other political office holders, they said that we fumbled it. Now, I, I don't know. I don't know if that's accurate. I'm just telling you what they told me. Uh, I know there was. I know there was some. I know there was some uh, com legal complications mm -hmm. with it. I don't know. I don't know the specifics. Again, I'm not very privy to them. Uh, so I, I can't say. I can't say one way or another. Um, but I, I know that that was an issue. But. What's this one? My vacation home in Florida. I like that. Let's it, do it that one. Paso Pimpista. Oh, yeah. I, I know. Yeah. That's I know a campaign guy, manager uh, for one of the candidates. That That's a question that always comes up. He's, he's very <laughs> active on our page. He, he definitely uh, contributes a, a hey, lot to our page. Yeah. I, you know, I, I think I from my interactions with him, he's a nice guy. Yeah. I know you've gotten to, you've gotten. This is politics. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. politics. This is the arena I chose. Yeah. If you're going to be critical of me, I'm taking it. I got thick skin. If I if I was taking offense to it, I wouldn't be in this. But we can talk about that. I bought a place in Florida 13 years ago. It's it's in near St. Petersburg, Clearwater, Florida. When I retired, I spent my winters there. But since I decided to run for mayor, I haven't been there as much. But this this is the most important part of this. So it's vacant. It's vacant. <laughs> yeah. Go down. <laughs> Here's, where, this is my where is that? <laughs> it's a nice area. Here's the most important part of this thing. I had this place when I was a principal at school. And I retired with 300 sick days and unused vacation days. What's that tell you? It tells you I go to work. Yeah, yeah I had a place in Florida. You enjoy your job. I right. Oh, yeah. I love my job. Yeah. And I wouldn't be running, I wouldn't be I, running for this position if I didn't enjoy. Uh, I know I wouldn't enjoy this as well. That's one thing I can I can definitely say about you is that I I just really like people that mm -hmm. like their job, mm -hmm. and that was something I picked up early on with you. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, kids in school. I don't know. Maybe some people have a, a an opposing opinion to that, but I always I always thought like there's a guy, you know, that enjoys it. a lot of the teachers too. There's yeah. a, there's somebody that enjoyed their job. You know, Man, I had a hard time leaving that position. I, I really did. And, and I got to tell you, you know, there was a video of the last day, my last day there, and I haven't gone through it yet. I get too emotional. Really? I get too emotional. I haven't seen the whole made thing it through yet. yet. Nope. I have not. There's a couple of videos I haven't made it through, but we won't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, listen, and, and, and people get that know me, they get the biggest kick out of saying that I won't be at work. I am an anal guy. Once I start doing something, I don't stop. I'm going to give you a statistic that's really, really silly, but I'm going to say it anyway. You know, I was a baseball fanatic for the longest time, and I played in the North County Baseball League, which is a league that's 76 years old. I played in that league for 30-some years. You know how many games I missed? I'm guessing zero. One. One. I broke my leg. Oh, no. One. I know people say, get out of here. I miss one game. But the guys that I play with, they know. I miss one game. One game. If I say I'm going to do something, I'm That's going it. to do it. So and, they, and, and listen, all that is is they don't know. If you're going to criticize me, come on. Come up with something better than that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, 
I don't know. I don't know why, but he asked it, and it got votes, so we're asking. Yeah, I'm okay with so asking anything. Now, the next one down, personal favorite, are we going to give him this breaking news a TV channel? Yes, me. I, I don't, well, that's the question. How would I know that? I don't that, know. That's you. Know, that's <laughs> Abdu. Abdu is a, a good friend of mine. Abdu. Yeah. He makes the best Peter around. Well, he actually, on our show, he got voted best great leaps. Yeah, he's good. Best dinner, best restaurant. I think he got the best person and uh, something else. He, he wins everything, every time we put up and something he's that good. he has to do with. I had him in class at Butler, too. Oh, yeah? I do. Yeah. We won't talk about that. We'll ruin everybody's opinion. Speaking of class, this last one, and then we'll we'll just go off the cuff here. We'll end it if you want to. Yeah. But, um, so... This comes from Rocco Million, and from my understanding, Rocco Million was one of your favorite students. Is that is that accurate? <laughs> I love that kid. <laughs> that kid, listen to me. When he first came in in September, I had a full head of hair. When he left in June, I was completely bald. <laughs> Rocco Million. But you know what, though? I've been reading what he's been saying. He's, he's educated himself. Yeah, he, he's, he's really, really turned it. He had. Yeah, and he really there's is. talk. We we may me and Rocco we may do something like where we we talk to each other. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. But that you know he's an interesting person. But his question <laughs> is how does he plan on dealing with addiction and police terror? So how do you plan on dealing with addiction and police terror? I don't feel like those are two of the same. Well, yeah, I'm not so sure. Well, well, listen, right. addiction. He, he, here's a I very, I sympathize with with obviously people who have addiction issues. And, and that's why I've been educating myself, going to the seminars and finding out what, what could be the cure for this disease that ravages our community and our nation. So, uh, and, and I think the city needs to embrace those, whenever they do those things and be involved wholeheartedly and help them in any way that they can. So with that said, police terror, I'm not so sure what I even know what that means in our community. Now, you know, obviously, I'm not privy to everything that goes that goes around. Yeah, and, and, yeah, you know, I don't know. How I, I, I don't, I don't know. But I have a lot of confidence in our police officers. I have a lot of confidence yeah, in they, Chief Salem and his assistants and what they do and how they handle yeah. things. So, you know, I, I really don't have any comment. I, I, it doesn't seem like I, all the police officers I know are nice guys. You know, they're they're yeah. going after the bad guys and. And the bad guy's got to do what they ask them to do. Yeah, they're or not even get physical with them. I think, what he's, I think he, what he's worried. I think one of the things he talks about is like sort of police intimidation, which I I can't speak to that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's something he's very vocal about, but I I can't speak to that because I don't necessarily know. Yeah. You know what I mean? I I don't know. I avoid all you know. I, interactions with the police, I, there's nothing. If a policeman I get pulled over, I get yeah. taken every once in a yeah. while. If a policeman pulls you over, show them your hands. That's it. Show them your hands. Just do what he says to do. Yeah. That, yeah. That's it. I, I don't um, know. But again, I, I, and listen, and I don't mean to, to be disparaging against anybody who had problems with police officers. That's I'm a sure. tough question. Yeah, to I'm, I'm sure there are some, some you know, incidents where, where, where they may have a overstepped their authority. You know, and if you're talking about the, the national scene, yeah, I think it's yeah. I think if, if it's yeah. a national scene, again, you know, I'm not going to comment on it because I'm not running for any national office that's going to that solve that problem. Yeah, I'm running for mayor, Newcastle. I'm focused on the problems that that are confronting this community. That's it. We we don't seem to feel too many police complaints. To make complaints about the police at all, yeah. I, I don't think. You know, and a lot of people, you know, now in a small town, it's like. You know, hey, that's you know, that's your cousin, or you know, you know, you know them personally to where, you know, uh, not to where there there's nepotism, but you know them personally to where I, you know, I grew up with that guy. I can honestly say he's a very straightforward person. Yeah. Um, dealing with addiction, you know, I, I think we already answered that. So that's that's it for the questions. Yeah. Um, well, hey, listen, this is this is very enjoyable. You know, I um. Uh, th this is something that's close to my heart. You know, I, I think I, I think it's safe to say, you know, everybody goes out there and they say that that, that you know they love the community. Again, that's not a distinguishing characteristic. Um, but I think I'd be the only candidate who'd be running for this job if it didn't pay. I can tell you that. Didn't you say you were going to do something 
different. Yeah. What, what do you? Yeah. What well, are you going to do? You know, I, I've always been a, a like I said, I'm, I'm a fiscal. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm a fiscal conservative. I've uh, donated uh, thousands of dollars to uh, different baseball programs in our community. Um, I think that's important. Uh, kids, uh, kids have a, 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 a strong desire to, to play baseball you know, on a collegiate level, and if it has, if they have an opportunity to get their education paid for, I think that's very, very important. Um, so I, I've been, I've always donated money. I'm, I, I'm not saying this for a pat on the back. I'm not saying that that's the reason you should vote for me. I'm just telling you what, what I've done. Right. Um, and. And what what I'm what I'm talking about as far as the salary is concerned, I've said this. I said I'll, I'll donate a good portion of my salary to different for, to, to different local charities that are that I believe are, are worthy of it. Um, and and I'm very fortunate in my life, I'm financially stable, that that I'd be able to do that. As I said, I'd probably, I'm the only guy that would be running for this job if it didn't pay. Yeah. And I know that's not possible. I know people that has to happen because people need to have a living. But um, for me, that's not why I'm running. It's not. I don't need the health care, and I don't need. I don't need the money. But I need this job. But I need the job. And you feel that the job needs you. Well, yeah. You know, it, it, I, I think I'm. I'm the most qualified for this position. I think I'm the most prepared for this position. I think I have. Uh, I've put my plan out there. I think my my plan is a solid one. Um, and I think I'm prepared to, to put people around me. Who are who are better than me that have an expertise and an understanding of what the challenges are in this community and how to handle those challenges. You have a good team of people. You want to talk about those people? Well, I, I have a great team of people. Listen, I, I, I surround myself in this campaign with people who are not yes people. You can't believe how many times I'll come up with an idea and they'll say that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Uh, and and there's some people here that do it, and and I can tell you that my girlfriend does it a lot. And, the, and my campaign managers do it a lot. So uh, there are no yes people around me, none. Yeah. And there's nobody that wants anything after this is over. They're looking for all the right reasons. They believe in their heart that I'm the best candidate, and they believe that I'm the guy that can lead this city forward. And those are the people I want around me. That's them. That's who I have around me. And that's why, and I told them, if you're getting involved with me, don't think you're getting anything out of this, and this is gonna be forever, it's going to be relentless. It's going to be aggressive, and we're going after this. And and they jumped on board, and and, and that's our movement. And, and and that and I'm very thankful. Believe me, I am flattered that they that they believe that I'm the guy for this job. I, because they're I've said this from the beginning. Don't vote for me, or don't vote. And we shouldn't vote this way anyway. We we vote for people because of religion, because they're your cousin, they're your friends. I play racquetball with a bunch of guys right do i want them to vote for me because i play rap yeah. no don't vote for me because i'm a white italian no you shouldn't vote for any of those reasons vote for the person who you think will best handle these problems that are confronting this community because if the wrong person gets in there that's overwhelmed we're going in receivership did you hear michael delai's statement what did he, he say? say? Don't vote for me because I have a vow in my last. Yeah, year. right. He's yeah, right. It's, yeah, it's absolutely. He's true. right, and, yeah. and I got to tell you, there. Are, you know, earlier I had a guy. I I asked a, a friend of mine. I said, you know, do I have your support for this office? And he told me, no, I'm voting for somebody else. And this is why he told me. And I said, well, why? And he said, well, he needs a job, and it doesn't matter who will the mayor, who's going to be the mayor. It took everything for me not to jump over that table and hit him in the head. Like, wake up! Yeah, it's, it, it, I was very offended by that. Yeah, I was very offended by it. And it's a friend of mine. Uh, but, you know, again, that those things frustrate me. And people wonder, like, are you angry? No, I'm not angry. I'm frustrated. It matters who's going to be the mayor. You better believe it matters. Yeah, what good is a job if the city's not going to be here in a couple of months? Yeah, what you know? good is it? Yes, and, yeah. and, and I think, and, and again, you know, we're, we're talking about some people say, well, the city's doing well. What city are you looking at? Go outside. The city is not doing well. The city is on the precipice of receivership. So if you're going to put somebody in there because they're the same religion, they're your cousin, they're the same color, all those things, guess what? Guess what? We're going in receivership. Put the best person in there that's prepared mentally, physically. I've been prepared for this for five years. Five years. This is not a whim. This isn't something I decided 
eight months ago because I need a job. This is because I'm committed to this, I'm directed, and I'm ready to do this. That's a great statement. I've got one last, and then you can make your final statement. Okay. Who would you rather see win the Republican election? <laughs> you know what? That's a great question. Because we have a debate coming up are, on are. Wednesday night. You know, I, I have to say this. I, I, I you have can to say, say no this. comments yeah. if you want. No, no, no. I, I always make comments. I haven't been paying attention to that race simply because it's not my it's not my race. You know, I learned in baseball that you play one game at a time. You don't worry about the, the semifinals when you're in the quarterfinals. So I'm worried about this race right here. Whenever this is over and we're successful, whoever that winner is, then my attention will be directed upon them. Now, and, and I have to say this as well, just because I'm running against a person and I'm, and I'm going after it, that doesn't mean that I don't have a, a personal respect for everybody who puts their name on the ballot because it's not easy. You know what? I've sat and talked with every single it's candidate. It's not easy. No, and I can tell you, man, it is. It's a tough competition. It's a tough, yeah. yeah. It, it is. And, and people, and they have to know that. You know, it's not that I have, I don't have any animosity towards anyone. No, they're all real. There's no reason not, to have any. There's other. none. All, and I don't take it personal. Good. But I'm going out there to demonstrate to the voters that I am a better candidate than you. That's the game. That's what we're in. Don't get offended by it. That's what we're in here. I'm a better candidate than you. And if I can't demonstrate it, then I shouldn't get your vote. That's what the game we're in. Some people take offense to it. There's no, if you're taking offense to it, you're in the wrong arena. You're in the wrong arena. Because if you think this is bad, wait till you get in office. Let's say, I was going to say, let's say you win. Yeah. <laughs> you plan to translate that to. Listen, when you get in office, you make decisions. Every time you make a decision, you alienate a group of people. And those people think you're a jerk. Yeah, I learned that in coaching. Well, well, every coach that's gets what? going on with me recently. Yeah. Actually, so. <laughs> every coach gets fired, right? Every coach gets fired. When are they at the peak of their popularity? When they first start working as a coach. That's true. After That's it goes on, true. you're getting fired. This is If you think running this political campaign and you're getting hurt by criticism or somebody saying, look, I'm better than you and this is why I'm running and this is why people should vote for me and not for you, if that hurts you, you're in the wrong arena. Because wait till you get in office. You think it's heated now. Wait till you get in office. Yeah, I mean, the current the current uh, incumbent takes a lot of heat, man. You it gotta have a thick skin and you gotta be a duck. Let it roll off you. Yeah. Let it roll off. So I think that's it for questions. Let's get your closing statement. Uh, well, Mike, it's simple. Uh, and, and I don't think anybody stayed on this long because even, you know, Abraham Lincoln, I know you listen to Abraham Lincoln this long. Actually, but, this is the most. Yeah. We're going up. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, I, I, all I can say is is this, you know, it's, it's time for change. I hope that, um, I've earned your vote. I want to earn your vote. I don't want anybody giving me a vote. I hope I've earned your vote. Um, and I can tell you this, and I said this before, and I'm going to repeat this. And I've said it um, at the at the um, confluence. Life is not measured by how many breaths you take. Rather, it's valued by how many times life takes your breath away. And I'm here to tell you that my administration is going to take your breath away. And you're going to see what a strong mayor can do for this community. I guarantee you that. Mark Alisco, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being on. Thanks. It was fun. We are in the broadcast.